everybody, it's Julian or Flow Graphics here and welcome to another video. Uh, this is, I guess, a Flow Talks or maybe it's a Game Dev Diaries. I don't know. If you're new to my channel, I've created series in the past called Game Dev Diaries where I've basically created games and I've sort of yeah, designed them, done everything and then sort of documented the whole process. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, I'm creating another game. So I'm going to be spending the next six months to a year or so creating like a fully fledged, fully complete game by myself. And I'm going to document the entire process. So this is the first episode of what's going to be many of me showing you what I'm working on and explaining what I'm doing and um, getting your feedback and all of that. So yeah, if you don't really know about um, game design and all that, that's fine. Uh, maybe you can learn a bit. I, honestly, I think it's pretty interesting even if you don't really have any sort of... Um, I know, like, if you're not really interested in game design, it's pretty interesting just to see how they're made anyway. And saying that a lot of what I do in these videos isn't necessarily just for game design. I'm going to be working in Photoshop. I'm going to be doing art and 3D modeling as well as programming and other things. So um, I pretty much say it's going to be applicable. Like, you, all of you are going to enjoy this uh, pretty much. So, yeah. So uh, I've sort of recorded uh, what I've worked up to so far. So... That's what this video is. It's sort of like a speed art, I guess you could say. And the interesting part of me making this game is I'm going to record the entire process of me making this game. I don't think it's ever been done before on this sort of scale. Like I'm guessing I'm going to be working on this game for probably at least like a thousand hours or so. And I'm going to record every single minute of that a thousand hours. So yeah, should be pretty interesting. Um, this recording here, this video is probably the first like five to 10 hours of me working on the game and I've just, I've just sped it up to 10 minutes or so. Uh, so yeah, so you can see what I've done so far. Um, and at the end of all this a year from now or however long it takes me to make the game, uh, I'm basically gonna release a video to YouTube but with as long as YouTube will let me sort of make a video, let's say it's like a hundred hours. Um, and yeah, and that's going to be the entire process of me making a game. I'm going to upload from start to finish a speed art <laughs> of like a year in time of me making a game of every single minute I've made this game. So every time I work on it, on this game, I I'm going to re I'm going to be recording my screen no matter what, it even if it's to do with like 3D modeling or Photoshop or anything to do with this game, I'm recording my screen. And technically there's going to be like documentation and actual video recording of every single part, every single step of me making this game. And I think that'll be really interesting. Uh, I just, yeah, for, for myself to look back upon as well as, you know, a year from now, uh, me uploading that video would just be just super interesting. And hopefully you guys will find it really interesting too. Um, but it also means I'm gonna be sharing with you the along the way as well, the process. So hopefully every two weeks or so, I'll be uploading a video. Um, they might not all be sort of like this speed art sort of um way where i just talk over it uh i might be actually sort of in real time going over the game and going through through things and giving tutorials and all that as well just depends on i guess what i've worked on in that past uh sort of week or so so i'll talk a bit about what i've worked on so far and a bit about the actual game itself so what the game is it's it's a one player game it's very similar to a game that i previously worked on called tension i guess it's it's almost like the successor to that game in like a one player version um and yeah it's going to be a very similar art style and all that as well so it's basically one player uh top down isometric 3d puzzle game <laughs> uh i say one player though there's two two characters in the game that that one player controls and you sort of have to do like co-op uh sort of multiplayer with yourself so you basically need to move both of these characters yourself and work together in order to get through the levels. And that's something, that's what makes this game interesting and different. That's that's something that um, happened in the last game I made called Tension, except it was, obviously it was two player. Imagine exactly what I'm talking about, except it's a two player game, individual people control the individual characters and the characters were joined by a rope and you couldn't, you couldn't go like far away from each other because you're physically joined by a rope. But then that rope could interact with the environment and you could pull things and do all sorts of stuff with it. Um, so this is sort of like the one player version of that game. That's a bit more refined and, and, and all that. So I'm going to be using some sort of traits from that game going forward, but that's basically how it works. And in this video, I've just sort of creating the basics. So what I did is 
just created a capsule, which was going to be the player. Um, and then I sort of made a script where basically detects my mouse movement on the screen and then translates my mouse movement to like real world space movement. And then I just made the player, uh, the player's rotation, just look at where my mouse is on the screen. So you can see a little blue sphere on the screen right now to the right of the blue player. Um, and what that blue sp sphere is, you can see when I play the game, that sphere moves with my mouse and it actually like clings to the, to the ground. So um, that's what I was talking about. It basically just makes my mouse project a sphere forwards. And then whenever that sphere hits something, you, it, obviously it's gonna hit the ground. And wherever that is, that's where the player moves towards. So if you click down on your mouse, the player moves towards that sphere. So that's the basic sort of movement system that I've gonna use for this game. Um, so I did that and then I got a bit carried away. I added um, a little cloak for the player. And then you can see me working on like cloth physics probably way too early to be working on cloth physics. I, I just got carried away because I just absolutely love cloth physics and um, it just looks so cool and I just couldn't not do it. So yeah, and then the next sort of few minutes I sort of work on um, the player swapping. So because you're gonna be swapping in between the players, I need to create a system where you can either select one player or you can select the other player or you can select both players and you can just keep sort of swapping through all of that. Um, as well as jumping and just sort of general interacting with the environment. Um, and then I think right at the end, I just work on like player respawning and their checkpoints and things like that. And that's pretty much what I've done so far. I've just created a basic movement system for the characters, um, sort of like a swapping system. So you can swap between what character you want to use. And then also you can detect, I made like a system where you can control where the characters spawn in the world and their checkpoints as well. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically where I'm up to. The next two weeks or so, I'm going to be working on like death. Um, I'm basically going to make like the first level. Uh, it will probably just be like a, a bridge and a couple of interactable blocks. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to be yet, but I'll make like a couple of traps and some blocks that you can move around and do things with. And then if you fall off the bridge, you'll you'll die and then you'll get reset back to the, back to the spawn. And then if you get to the other side of the bridge, you win and then you go to the next level. So that's basically what I'm going to create um it's called a game loop i'm just going to create the initial game loop so if you imagine the game pong like that 2d tennis game if if you hit the ball past your the person you're versing and went past them and then just nothing happened and the ball kept kept bouncing that game would have no game loop like it wouldn't really be a game it would just be an infinite ball going back and forward but since the ball actually scores a point and then if you score so many points you win and the game ends that's what's called a game loop like there's actual there's um, an end to the game and then the game can reset and do that again. So that's what I'm going to create um, next is actually create that sort of situation where the game can be played. That's really important in game design is to sort of work in iterations. Uh, it's sort of like project management theory as well, like work in sprints, sort of work every few weeks, build everything up together. Um, I don't want to get too technical about it, but yeah, in game design, it, it's just really good to rather than just focusing all your time on one thing and then when that one thing's really perfectly done, then you move on to the next thing and then you make that one, that next thing perfect and then you move on to the next thing. You work on sort of as much as you can all at the same time and just make everything good enough or just okay to where you have a working prototype for your game. And then once everything's working, then you can give that out to people and get instant feedback and people can tell you if your game's good or bad and then you can instantly change things. And then once you know, you've gotten some really good feedback, then you wanna go forward, then you can get all those things that are sort of okay and then make them a little bit better and then a little bit better. And then you just keep sort of building up until you have a really nice game. That's sort of what I've been taught. And that's what I think works a lot better. And it, it's sort of the same system that most AAA studios and things use when, when they're sort of making games. So yeah, going forward, um, I'm gonna be a lot more sort of particular. So uh, let me know in the comments if you have anything specific that you want me to go over. Um, all I've really worked on so far is what you can see on the screen. It's just like a mainly programming and a little bit of sort of game design work. Um, I haven't really done much art at, at all yet. Um, the only really art asset I put into the game was that cloak and I just, I stole that. I, I made that uh, like a year ago for another game and I just quickly put that in. So I'll, I'll remake the cloak at some point probably. Um, but yeah, th this game's 99% completely made from scratch. You can see all this, all the programming, everything I'm doing now is, is completely from scratch. I'm not borrowing anything else from any other games. Um, so yeah, that that's what this game's gonna be. I'm gonna make it completely from scratch. I'm not just gonna like throw in a bunch of shit from the Unity Asset Store and just steal a bunch of code from other games because 
that sort of destroys the point of me recording this all and document documenting it all and doing all this. I want to do it from the ground up, which is important. So yeah, I hope you guys sort of like this video and like this style of videos. I, I know the Game Dev Dives are pretty popular before um, when I did them like a year ago. So hopefully you guys can get back into it. And you know, th this really isn't just me showcasing the game to you. I want to get all of your feedback as well. I want to make this like a really cool experience where I can sort of work with all you guys for the next year or so, get all your feedback. And then let's say, you know, six months to a year from now, I'll have a finished game that's playable that you can go get on Steam and you may have actually made some changes to that game. Like maybe you comment on the video, say, hey, you should do this like this. And I'm like, yeah, totally. That's a really good idea. And then I change it and then you can go play the game and what you said, the input that you gave would actually be in the game. I think that's really special. So that's what I sort of want to create over the next few months creating this game. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I'll be a lot more specific in the next sort of episodes going over specific things and why I created them and all that. Um, and yeah, I've got a tutorial coming soon as well. Sorry, I've had the flu the past couple of weeks. Uh, I haven't even had the voice to be able to make a video. Sorry if my voice was a bit croaky uh, this episode. Um, I usually tell you guys to say weird things in the comments for flow talk. So let's, why not? Let's do it for game design. I'm guessing most of you guys are going to be interested in games. So, um, comment your favorite game in the comments, just whatever your favorite all time favorite game is, comment it in the comments. I'd have to say for me, it would probably be, it'd probably be rust the, the it's on steam. It's a PC game called rust. It's like a survival first person game really fun game. I have way too many hours in that game. It has sucked away my life. But yeah, tell me what you guys' favorite game is. I'd love to know. So as always, everybody, I hope you have an amazing day. It's been Julian or Flow Graphics here. See ya.